question seven. Okay, so you're talking about 19 marks here for the calculations that are involved in the black scores option pricing model and the rest of it will be uh, theory. Okay, again, we'll go through the solutions. If there's any corrections on the solutions, we'll correct away and we'll work together. So hopefully you have a calculator and a pen handy in paper. Uh, it'd be very handy to do this so that you can make notes and also help me confirm some of the calculations here. Notice as well, if you're asked the black scores option pricing model, you will be given a formula, okay, and these tables. So let's go back, I'm gonna highlight a few things, some important points to note. The price of a call is 99 euro. The strike price is 100. Risk-free rate of interest. And we're told volatility is 16%. And finally, we have time to maturity is six months. Okay. Sometimes a theoretical question comes up about explaining the, the parameters involved in calculating the Black Skulls option pricing model. And you'll actually see them all here. Look, there's the stock price, there's the strike, the risk free, the volatility, and the time to maturity, even if you weren't, if you didn't know what, how to explain them. Just list them out because they're already listed there because you'll get something for it. Anyway, I'm going to, we're going to abbreviate or replace these words with letters and so that it reflects the type of letters that are in each of the formula. So if, for example, stock price is represented by S, the strike price is represented by K, the risk-free rate of interest is represented by OR, time to maturity T or capital T, and volatility is uh, sigma, like your standard deviation. So uh, what I, I did this up in Excel. So what we're going to do, it's not a great solution in terms, it's not clear in terms of how we calculated this. So we're going to, we're going to work through all this together. Okay. Um, so there's the abbreviation I was on about. Okay. All your letters, stock price, 99, strike 100. Time to maturity was six months. Remember, you need to express that as a decimal. Okay, so that's 0.5. Volatility is 16%. So 16%, we need to express it as a decimal and risk-free interest rate as a decimal and not as a percentage. So this coughed a few people out in a previous question. I remember when we were dealing with percentages like 0.8%. But it's just a simple error, okay? We call, someone had it called 0.8%, 0.08. You need to divide it by 100. It's just a simple thing. I just have that in mind because it just removes any simple errors that could be made. So 1.25% divided by 100 is 0 0.0125. And you know that, but just in case someone puts on 0.125, okay, that's 12.5%. So let's work through that first part. You notice if I, I don't have the call option formula written in, even though you do first. Okay, I just concentrate on D1. Okay, so breaking D1 down, let's work this together just in case I have errors in here. So if you could write out this then, LN for your stock price, put in 99 divided by 100. And let's do that first part. So getting the natural log of 99 over 100, we get this. Right, so that's that first part. Let's look at the next part here. Or plus volatility squared over two. So let's look at volatility squared. Volatility squared is your 0.16 squared. Or divided by two is your 0 0.0128. Then I add on my risk-free rate of interest, 0 0.0125. And I multiply that by my time to maturity, which is a half a year. Multiply by 0 0.5. And I guess 0 0.01265. Next is your denominator. So we need to get the square root of time and we multiply it by your volatility of 0.16. And I have 0.113137, just here. And once we work through all of those, add the red with the blue and divide it by the yellow. If you want to do that, we should have this value here, if someone could confirm that one. Yep. So that's your D1 part. So just the four steps involved, that's all. 
we're going to now get the normal distribution figure for that. And you'll see I have the answer already in here. So we need to do that. And how I get from D1 to ND1 is using the normal distribution tables. So please, uh, if you could just write down, because um, I'll only have to come back to it, please write down this number. You don't have to use all of these decimals, but just note 0 0.02298 maybe, round that up to maybe five decimal places. So because the normal distribution tables are only to two decimal places, we cannot come along and just take, get the normal distribution of 0 0.02 or 0 0.03. We want to be more accurate. So we use that additional part to 2978 to help us with finding our answer. So this is like um, two, two and a third, okay? If you want to round it even to 0 0.023, all right? So let's have a look at your table. We have the first table with your values less than zero. Notice our value was a positive, so please don't use this. We want values that are greater than zero. So this is the table you use for the positive value for the 0 0.022. Here's an illustration of how it's done. So 0 0.022. Notice there's 0 0.0 and there's the two part. So those two combined, firstly your column, 0 0.02. And you notice that it only goes to two decimal places. So what I have and what I need here is this figure here. So this is the 0 0.02 part. But our answer is 0 0.022978. And if I was to mark it off, and if there was, was this took account of every decimal between 0 0.02 and 0 0.03, halfway is about here if I had a 0 0.025. But I want a 0 0.023, which is approximately here. So this is telling us that our answer lies between 0 0.02 and 0 0.03. Therefore, I also need this figure here. And these two combined is going to help me guess or going to help me calculate what my 0 0.02298 will be. Our answer lies between these two. So how do we get that? Well, we're going to use what's suggested up here. But I'm going to try and override this. Okay. So instead of the 0 0.6278, I have 0 0.02298. 0 0.02298. 0 0.02298. Okay, so there we have, that's what I will put in there. Then this is telling us here that I can only get the two decimals. So the two decimals is 0 0.02, that's what I was looking for, plus the remainder of it. So that 0 0.78 instead will be the rest of this here because I've already taken the two decimals. I need to get, if you can imagine that's a value of 0.3, if I was to round it up, I need to get a third of the difference between these two. Look at, do you remember? In between these two, I need a third of the way or 0.9278 of the way, which will help me get a number that will lie between these two. So the number that our answer lies between is the 0 0.03 and the 0 0.02. So that's why I will put in 0 0.03 and I had the 0 0.02 in there. So that's what I'm working on. And this, this, um, this is actually given to you in the tables in the exam to help you as a guide. So this was our normal, this is our D1 value that we have to get the normal distribution figure for. So getting the normal distribution of 0 0.02, I have a highlighted there 0.508. I repeat this number, because that's like a third of the difference between NO3 and NO2, and NO3 is 5128 and 0 0.02 is 0 0.508. I'm forgetting decimals in here. 0 0.508 plus a third of the difference between 0 0.512 and 0 0.508. I got 0 0.50919. So that's great because I this value here that we've just, or well, that you've calculated lies in between these two numbers. Okay, there they are, though. it lies in between these two. So I'm happy with that. If I got a number outside of these, well, that's, that's no good. So you should be able to observe that the 0 0.509 lies in between those two. So I'm quite happy with that and we'll take that number. So there it is, yeah, you got it there, thanks. So 0 0.50919, okay? If you look at your formula for the call option, we now have, and I'm gonna highlight the same color, we now have ND1, it's up here. 
We also have the price of the stock, which was given to us in the exam. It was $99. We have the strike price, which was also given to us. That was 100. And we have the OR value, which I can't even remember, 1.25% and the time to expiration is 0.5 or six months. So we have those values. Now we need to find this ND2. What we need to do to get ND2 is use this formula here, D2 is equal to. So now that you have that, I want you to fill in what you know. And you know the value of D1. Please don't put in ND1 in here. You need to put in the value for D1, which we got up here. D1 was found to be this, if you recall. That's what we were getting the normal distribution figure of. So I need to write that figure in. And this here, the sigma times the square root of, sigma times the square root of it's time to expiration. We already had it in our D1 calculation. So you have that figure got already. There it is up there, 0.113137. So you should see that the value for D2, we should, if you can confirm that this is correct. It is correct, yeah. Okay, so that's what we have. Now notice it's negative as opposed to D1 being a positive. And you need to take that with you when you're looking up the getting the normal distribution because we need to get ND2. Look, it's in the formula here. We need to get ND2 in the, for the call option. So we use those tables, the negative one. So if someone could note that figure, minus 0 0.090159. So that's your greater than zero. We want the less than because we have a negative number. There's your model solution above the line to show you how we're going to work it, work it out. So what was a minus 0 0.09? So there's your minus 0 0.09. Okay. It's not, it's just coincidence that happens to be the first row. There's times where we have a minus 0.42 and a minus 0.27 or whatever. Okay. So in these, these examples, we, there are very low values, minus 0 0.09. The thing is, if you notice, our value is minus 0 0.09015. So between what two values will this lie between? It's going to lie between minus 0 0.09 and minus 0 0.1. That's what I need to highlight here as well. So these are the two figures that our answer will lie between. But because our number is 0 0.0 minus 0 0.09, minus 0 0.09015. It's very close to the two decimal minus 0 0.09. So if you were to look at creating a, a number line, let's just say this is minus 0 0.1. Just happen for convenience, it happens to be written in beside it. So our figure here of 0 0.4602. So if you think of that being our number line, our 0 0.0901 will fall very close to here. So our answer is going to be between this number and this number here, but closer to the value of point minus 0 0.09, okay? So, right, how do we find that out? Well, again, we need to put in the value that we got, point zero nine zero one. Five nine one. Okay, let's just round it up. We can only do two decimals. So what we're looking at firstly is the negative 0 0.09. I put in what's left of that. So see that zero after the nine? You need to not ignore that. So we have minus 0 0.01, that's like getting one and a half percent of the difference between the two of these, which is very little. So your answer is going to be close to the minus 0 0.09 anyway. And notice what's happening here is you have a minus 0.12 and a minus 0.13, which are which will be the equivalent of the minus 0 0.09 and the minus 0.1. And the reason why I said note the, the numbers here, ignoring the negative, you have a 0.12 and a 0.13 a low number and a high number compared to the positive tables we had a high number and a low number okay but notice that the negative negative 0.12 is still higher than negative 0.13 or in our case here negative 0 0.09 is still higher than negative 0.1 if you think of it in terms of the number line it's closer to zero 
Okay, so just, just follow the guidelines that you see up here. Anyway, uh, let's fill in the numbers here. What did we get for minus 0 0.09? I've actually blocked it out, but we have a 4641. I'll repeat this out again. And 4641. And a minus 0.1 we see it here, look, 0 0.4602. And if you can work that out, let's see what we got. There, it's 0 0.4640. Three. 795. So 3795, okay. So I don't have space here. So we should see that. And I, I personally, I actually rounded up to, uh, to five decimals. So points uh, three, 3579, we said. Now that seemed as if we spent a long time, but I just had to explain and run through with you. This is something that you can just keep on practicing and get familiar with. And if you're approaching it in the exam, you should have those parts done within a couple of minutes and not the 20 minutes or so that we spent uh, working through it. Now that we have that, ignore what, I, what we have here on the right side. We don't need it. We're going straight into calculating the call option. So we put in all the values. So if you write them all out, your stock price is going to be $99. Your ND1 we found to be 0.5091912. Your strike. $100. E is your exponential function. And that exponential function is a uh, constant. So if you don't know what it is, you should, it'll be in the calculator anyway, and you might prefer to work with the, that button. But just write down what the value of the exponential function is. E is equal to 2.71828 minus or, or is your risk-free rate of interest times your time to expiry. And that's multiplied by ND2. And we found ND2 to be 0 0.46404 or 40397. So if someone can confirm that about half of $99 is your 50.409, what about X e to the power of minus RT? 99.3769. Okay, here's a tip. I mentioned it to you. It's not really a tip, okay? It's just something to be aware of. When you have e to the power of minus RT, anything to the power, when it comes to the exponential function, when it's to the power of a negative, your answer is always just slightly less than one. So like for example, 0.99. And when we multiply it by 100, that's why you have a 99 point, whatever. It could be 0 0.97, 0 0.98, but it's gonna be less than one. If you have e to the power of a positive RT, your answer is just gonna be slightly greater than one. For example, 100.2 or 101 or 102. You should be aware when you're calculating it that you should have an answer for e to the power of minus RT, irrespective of what the value of R and T are, you should always have a 0 0.97, 0 0.98 or 0.99 answer. And if you don't get that, you need to work out it, work, go through it again until you find out that your answer is actually less than one. Then we multiply it by 100 to get us this value here, 99.37. Uh, we have this already. And then you can do ne the next step if you wanted to, or just go straight into the answer. If anyone can confirm if that call option price is correct, 430. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so that's worth 15 marks, 